In this chapter two, we will have a look at the European vision for modernizing, transforming government. Uh, so the European vision also on how can we design, how can we deliver uh, better public services by making use of data and technologies. And we would like to use, the, I would like to introduce this chapter by uh, presenting to you this quote or this statement from the recently launched 2030 Digital Compass communication in which the EU European Commission represents its view on the, digital, on the way uh, for the digital decade. You see, I'm not going to read the quote, but you see there are some elements with regard to online delivery of services, online democratic life, uh, online public services where the ambition is that they should be fully accessible for everyone, uh, they should be easy to use, they should be efficient, uh, also personalized service, etc. But on the other hand, they should also be in line with the highest security and privacy standards. Uh, just a few more, uh, a few more words about the 2030 Digital Compass, which is in fact the recently launched uh, document communication in which the EU uh, presents its view, its digital amb ambitions for the next decade. Uh, it consists of a series of very concrete targets, uh, and it in fact shows how the EU wants to move forward towards or throughout the digital decade. Important elements here that consist of four focus areas, four key topics. It's not only about government, but it also looks at it in a, looks at transformation, digital policy uh, from a broader perspective. Skills are important, infrastructure, but also uh, digital transformation of businesses. On the right side, you see the precise targets that have been formulated with regard to these four, four main domains. Uh, with regard to digitalization of public services, there is a target of uh, online provision of key public services, but there are also targets with regard to e-health and the use of the EID or digital identity. identity. Important here, key conclusion, it's a key document on the uh, EU's view on the digital society, which talks about digital government, but also about other elements of society that are important in the light of the digital transformation. Uh, important, so this one, the, it's a, the most recent uh, communication on, on, on the EU's digital policy, but it's a building on and it's in, lie on with, it's in line with many other policy cornerstones, policy instruments, all with regard to digital policy. Uh, there are several strategies, European digital strategy, the data strategy, strategy for artificial intelligence, and then you only have many types of uh, funding programs to make sure that the EU is achieving its goals, objectives with regard to a digital society, digital transformation. Important, so if you see here, many different elements about different types of technologies, AI, for instance, uh, high performing commute, computing, AI ideas. It's also quite a lot about data, European data strategy, etc. Uh, also about digital service, etc. Each of these shows that uh, the EU European Commission is quite active on this domain, but again, it considers digital transformation as government within a wider uh, evolution of a digital transformation of society. Another way to look at this is not by looking at the uh, particular strategies of actions but also by looking at the key principles that the EU put forward uh, with regard to uh, its digital policy. Again, I'm not going to read all of them, but I think the most important here is a really human-centered view. So this, it's about combining, but making sure that while implementing these technologies, while providing these online services, we also respect key pr uh, principles such as the fundamental rights, social participation, uh, mm. digital uh, sovereignty, uh, digital literacy, uh, sustainable digital society, so a lot of underlying principles that overall show what, are, what is now the EU's uh, view, vision on a digital society, which also applies to digital government. Now, like I said, in the 2030 uh, strategy, there is a target that the EU wants to achieve by 2030. And with regard to their public services, the ambition is to have by 2030 and 100% online provision of key public services available to European citizens and businesses. Now, looking at this target, it can be interesting to better understand, Stephen, what is now the current situation? Where are we now in July uh, 2021? Let us first look at the public services that already can be completed online. Here we see that 78% uh, of these uh, so-called key public services are now uh, can be completed online. Interesting to see, however, is that there are already differences between those services provided to citizens and services provided to businesses. Uh, with regard to services to businesses, there we see that the uh, situation with regard to the online availability uh, looks a little bit better. 
this overall leads to the score, score of 78% of public services that actually can be completed online. An interesting indicator, something uh, rated but differently, is to what extent some services, some public services are already fully automated in the sense that users do not have to apply or request this service. No, they receive it already proactively. Interesting to see, 9%, that's already the case. This already shows the current status, but also one element where some future uh, progress, where some uh, future improvement is uh, definitely possible. This applies also to a third element. The third perspective is to what extent these services are also available to citizens that are living in other EU countries or to businesses that are not operating within one country, but across uh, borders. So this is about the cross-border availability of services, where we again see that uh, with regard to services provided to businesses, situation is quite good. Services uh, provided to citizens, a little bit less and some uh, area for improvement. Let us look at, have a look finally a little bit closer at these cross-border services, because these closely relate to our examples of Anna, who wants to move to another country, and the situation of Mara, Marie, who wants to do business across Europe. So, she, so both of them uh, are requesting uh, information procedure, but also assistance, not only within their own country, but also uh, for what concerns other countries. So in here, there's a single digital gateway initiative of the European Commission. It's not only an initiative, there's also a regulation. And the aim of this regulation is to move away from the current situation where there still are quite a lot of online barriers for citizens and businesses that want to move, work, or start up a company in other European uh, country. The single digital gateway initiative and regulation wants to uh, remove these barriers and want to make sure that these citizens and these businesses um, can easily move, can easily start working or setting up their company uh, in another European country. They want to do it by intervening in three domains of areas. One end, it's about providing information services to make sure that Anna, but also Mary, Marie know which rules apply in my in another country, which rules apply in my new residency. Providing information to make sure that Anna and Marie can easily find this information will help them a lot. But it's not only about making sure that they can find the information. It's also, it would also be great for Anna and Mary if they could complete all the required uh, procedures online and without having to submit the same information several times. So that's the third, third element, the, the second uh, area of intervention where the EU wants to make sure that administrative procedures can be completed online across Europe. But then we can imagine that even with this information online, even with these administrative procedures online, maybe Marianne and Anna still have some problems, they have some questions. Then it's about how can we make sure that someone has his turn. It's about online assistance services, which is also under the scope of the single digital gateway. This all should read into the result into the creation of a single digital gateway. That's the one that facilitates online access to information administrative procedures, but also these assistance services. All with a target by December 2023, a set of key uh, administrative procedures should be available fully online, but they should also be made available fully ac accessible uh, across uh, for business, uh, for cross-border users. And also the uh, only one's uh, principle is important here in the sense that uh, citizens have to provide certain information only once and afterwards this information is, uh, is shared across different involved public administrations. So from a citizen business perspective, it will be able to perform uh, quite a lot of administrative procedures fully online than is currently possible. Looking at it from a public administration perspective, we see it's about interconnecting services throughout Europe. It's about flows of data, interoperability across borders. It's about organizations in different countries that are speaking to each other that are working together to make the life of Anna, Marie, and many other citizens in the same situations much more easier. Let us quickly uh, summarize what we've learned in this chapter, which focused on the EC policy context. Important to know, on one hand, this EC policy context consists of many different uh, initiatives, many different policies, instruments, legal instruments, funding instruments. So it's a quite, uh, should I say, complex, but also quite well-developed policy context, which covers many different elements of the digital transformation. That's one thing you should remember after this course. Second thing, the key ambition is about improving the accessibility to services, not only to citizens within one country, but to all EU citizens, to all EU businesses. 
those are these are the two main conclusions of this uh, chapter. <laughs>